Is he still feels like a new guy, you know? I feel like he's so young. Exactly. That's, yeah. And he, I feel like he's he's evolved. I mean, he's evolved so much as a person over his time in the scene, but also just as a player. Like his playstyle now, compared to watching him five years ago, right, is just so incredibly different. Yeah. Even though he's been playing at a top a level that long. Yeah. Now he just gets hit by dash attack like three times. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't we all sometimes, Reggie? <laughs> don't put me in that boat. <laughs> Ooh. I can do a dash attack three times in a row. <laughs> He's changing the game. We never said how, but he's changing the game. Yeah, and you know what's interesting too is that you know we talked about Wii Fit being kind of thought of as a winning or decent matchup against Steve at least, but uh, we've seen a lot of the sorties people feel like these characters at least do okay because they're able to like have that disjoint again to contest so many of their resources. But one of the the big benefits I think for Syrup with this TNT is his willingness to just use it to control a space, stop an approach, and then just build his resources back up, say, you can't smother me, I am going to not interact. Yeah, we saw, like, D-Dog was just threw a TNT down and had 11, 12 clean seconds to mine, got a whole resource bar, a whole new set of tools. We got the diamond out now, let's see what we can make happen here. Holding down center stage, but we've seen E fight back so many times, I love that stall with the side special. Yeah, no. He knew that D-Dog would like to press a button there, and he just used it so he could make him whiff and then just punish him for it. But here we see the classic situation. Will the TNT still stall? It's going to be the minecart actually coming in high. And wow. <laughs> I, I honestly love that from both players. Mr. E recognizing TNT there with with that pressure plate was deadly, so down tilting to disrupt it. However, then, right, Quandale was able to just throw that minecart out, recognizing, hey, it's going to catch anything else you do to counterplay this. A really good sort of coverage, making sure Mr. E doesn't run away too much with that lead, but still pretty good percent. Let's see if D-Dog can put one of those combos together. We have a pretty good tool set for it with the diamond tools, but it's going to be the minecart trade yet again. Mr. E is so confident with just going up there and kind of offering that trade over and over again. Like, yeah, he does take some damage, take some knockback, but usually, you know, D-Dog's just taking the stock loss, unfortunately. He's very much an old school player in that regard and that he is willing to just play neutral with you a hundred times if that's what it takes. takes because he will just rinse, repeat, do the safe thing that doesn't, right, that, that he will execute time and time again just like that, right, not to at any point that just calls you out, calls you out again and just keeps the situation going. Yeah, definitely more maturity mm -hmm. on Mystery because before, Ooh, no, oh, old, no, yeah, he's living that. So, uh, I believed you guys. <laughs> That was so smart. Yeah. Regardless of whether I believed, I didn't like it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Should have been that close. But, <laughs> what was it? Like, Mr. E was once known to be the player that just held forward, no matter what the interaction was. Now known for, like, their more patient play. Ooh, great foot throw right there. And I, I've had, like, people, like, just come up to me and like, yo, Mr. E is camped in me. <laughs> like, and I'm like, who? <laughs> is there a new Mr. E? Like New Mr. E. A great. Same with Cena. <laughs> a great little interaction there from both players. Mr. E trying to catch up you out with the dancing blade he did earlier, but D Dog with the SDI out there to find a way to pop out and keep on holding on for just a moment. But you see Mr. E here playing onto the platform, using that slingshot back to just try and bait out an approach from D Dog, but not biting with the minecart, so he's able to find a whole bunch of damage and really push this game to its final moments. Yeah. Just looking for that last hit though. A lot of back airs, a lot of trades coming in for Mr. E, but this is deceptively close right now. It's going to be one more back air, though. Mr. E taking a sigh of relief and the first game. Yeah, good job closing it. Definitely, like, as I was t stating, that, like, they had great patience. Mm -hmm. Kind of lost that discipline right there. Started approaching D Dog, and that's how you saw the percent. And definitely is like, oh, you built up such a lead. And Steve is one of those characters that we've seen can just zero to death you. Right, right. I mean, that. You know, diamond forward smash at like 110 was almost coast to coast. Yeah. We saw a diamond forward smash the other way. Could have been a very different game one, but we are going right into it here in game two. Sticking with the Lucina and the Steve and the Pokemon Stadium as well. I really like the way that we're seeing Mr. E use his movement here and lack thereof Ooh. to try and bait out Minecart especially. It seems to be something that he's prioritizing, trying to find punishes on right there, doing so again, keeping this edge guard going, not able to find the back air to continue it, but just rinse repeat on the ledge trap, keep it going. Lucina just has so many tools to just never let you out of the corner. Yeah, we pretty much saw all of them right there too. Really good routes from D-Dog to kind of go under with the up special or just try and go especially high. But these back airs just cover so much space for Mr. E. Even if they don't necessarily find the hit, they usually just beat out the minecart pretty effectively. 
and the down up angle they they cover the jump as well. They can call Ooh. fastballs pretty well. Getting caught by the dancing blade to boot. Reggie, Mr. B's locked in with that zero to death. Yeah, no, he is in there right now. Ooh, but the uh, TNT is still so dangerous. Just waiting it out right there. Yeah, and it, he does show great recognition on like what he can do with the TNT and how to interact with it. So like there, you, you didn't see him even needing to down tilt it to get like space. Ooh. I liked about to go high there. Great down air to mix up as well, right? Just contest E Dog. Say, hey, you're trying to force me to platform. Great, I see you, but you're not going to recognize the counter play. And it gives him the one chance he needed to get out. All right, now kind of just holding down center stage again. Not really forcing the issue, which is usually a good plan, but D Dog has been able to find a lot of material because of it. Even TNT, once again, giving like a full five or six seconds of just mining, which is not necessarily what you want to do, but history has always been fine with taking it slow. Yeah, you gotta know when you can respect Steve and like when you can like challenge him. Ow. Yeah. I appreciate that. Trying to go for it all essentially with a very deep back air, but the Elytra hit coming out. Hey, he listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> great way and great way over that up smash. Quandale had the idea, but as great as it all was, uh, that DI, that DI maybe not so much. No, but but we wanted a new stock. <laughs> right, right? True. Agreed. That first one went on a little too long. <laughs> Mystery was like, this is for the old heads. I'm going to yeah. hold forward. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the old days. You this, know? Is how you guys, this is how you guys remember me. Yeah, yeah. All right, now a dead even game. We saw some pretty explosive combos from D-Dog. No surprise that it's even yet again. Okay, good forward tilt. See if we can see some of that Mr. E signature edge guarding. Ooh. Nope, not gonna do it. Mm. Oh, that F smash, not gonna kill just yet, but coming very close on a stage other than PS2. It very well could oh. have. However, the roll breaking the block drop off, off early and making Mr. E eat that, F, that down smash when he just didn't quite want it. Now the clank on the diamond to boot. Mr. E is starting to scramble. He started off so hot, but now it's just. Has his back against the wall, it feels like. Yeah. D Dog also is recognizing these uppies from Mr. E. Right, right, right. And he's starting to panic. Okay, fair off stage. Gonna even up the stocks 25%. Honestly, this is a good time for Mr. E to make it happen. Assuming you don't get caught in one of these combos, you don't have a lot of materials to work with over on the side of D Dog. If you get some of those, you know, strings of back airs or neutral wins that we saw from Mr. E earlier, it can definitely still go his way, but D Dog only really needs one opening. But look at that 80% just from a few hits. Yeah, finding the landing up air, right? Something that doesn't necessarily start very quick, so not something you see Lee Steven look for, but Mr. E recognizing he needed an explosive start, so found it with the platform extension. Now having a huge opportunity, oh. had the F smash attempt there, but just didn't want to look for it. And so instead, now it's going to be just the scramble, right? Trying to find a way to close it out. And somehow the tech couldn't find another oh, chance. Oh my. The bravest jump yeah. from ledge I've ever seen. Mr. E, the riskiest person. Oh no. Yeah, and sometimes the risk it works out, but not that time for Mr. E. It's going to be D Dog taking that game. And there's a really interesting couple of interactions. Like I said, Mr. E came down, started to make it happen, started to put all the yeah. pieces together. A lot of big damage, but the problem is. Then you kind of get into that spot where you're like, all right, now how do I take the stock? And that's exactly where d Dog is like, please mess up. Every slight mistake is going to be this huge, huge punish, big damage, huge knockback as well. And even again, some, as someone like who's been here so many times before, right? Starting off a game with a zero to death and then losing can just be absolutely brutal from time to time. All right, and now this is a counter pick that I kind of expected. Uh, the other game, not necessarily for this game, I would assume that you know, D Dog probably would want to go to this stage, but it's gonna be Mr. E who actually brings us yeah. over to Smashville. So, you, this stage is like you might, you do get like wood, yeah, a bit more, a lot more actually, <laughs> but you get stone a lot less. Mm. So, it's a great counter pick. You also, if the Steve is camping you, it's a smaller stage, so you get to be right in there. I was gonna say, you can smother Steve very well here, and a player like Mr. E, who's been finding a lot of these platform extensions, but also just like really kind of struggled as. as Player four mentioned and with getting camped out, Mike can really condense that space, force these interactions, and then find early stops. Also, Quandel could have taken him in there beforehand because it was before eight o'clock on a Saturday. KK would have showed yeah, up. Yeah, two point, two point. We yep. just barely made it. <laughs> we got the boy. Also, you know, I do love me some poetic justice. Getting hit by the block that you placed into the mistech, into the early stop. Yeah. Oh no, the TNT off the minecart still going D Dog's way in the backer. 
You know what? Sometimes you can make it all the complicated in the world. Sometimes you just keep it simple. Just throw out a nice one. Oh, okay. A little block there to mess up the timing a little bit, but Mystery is all over it. So many options scouted. Still on the offensive here, but that there reach. is that grab. Dude, me too. Maximum me too. maximum extension right there Yo, from Steve. How much did Steve, the Minecraft people, I'm pay Sakurai for that one? I feel like if Lucina had a half size shoe smaller, it wouldn't have grabbed. Like, that was exactly max reach. Ask Katie about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rip, Rip Brooklyn. <laughs> Is that TNT? This time, though, Mystery was ready immediately on the offensive, jumping over it. And utilizing the hit, the hit box, or the, the hit extension on the crafting table there, mm. right, to find that punish when he otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Really smart from him, going for the stage spike, doesn't find it, but able to clean up the minecart afterwards. So just playing very disciplined right now. Mr. E, I feel like he's just never moved out from under this platform, which is exactly how you want to hold, hold stage yeah. control here on Smash. Oh, I know, doing fantastic job. All right, before Mr. E had gotten rid of the crafting table, just allowing it to spawn on stage. And <laughs> right there, in this initial in the start, he wasted a lot of Quandel's resources right there. Mm -hmm. But that's a good amount right now. And tried to set up that the dancing blade Ooh. to find an early one, potentially, but not able to do so just yet. Gonna keep this ledge trap going, breaks the minecart, rinsing down these resources little right. by little, oh, almost at their end. That's only three iron, one one block left in the oh. tank. Quandel's running out of room. Yeah, I thought the wood would be huge here, but it's actually the iron, and Mystery has been so good about going for those trades on the minecart that the minecart doesn't feel that safe. And no tech on that uh, stage spike. It's going to be Mr. EJ in the game in a surprising I fashion. I think he jumped into the blast zone there after missing this spike. Yeah, yeah, it looked like there were a few, like. few actionable frames there. But yeah. Probably did not necessarily matter. You probably just get to decide how you lose the stock in the bubble. Yeah, I know there's certain actions your character does that drags you more. That's the fox special. Yeah. The side special always sticks his tail right into the blast zone. Yeah, it's basically the character animation just extends and they just going to die. But still stoic as ever going right back to Pokemon Stadium for game number four here. We missed three with a slight lead, but D Dog's still looking pretty comfortable. Even on that counter pick when it looked pretty, pretty dreadful. It was still I would say fairly even. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. E, they're trying to get you underneath the block, right? Trying to force a similar missed tech to before, but instead, Pondale is not there, and he really has not been hitting these techs at all all day. Nah, he does not have an R button. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't even know if I've seen He's a shield, point. but yeah. Mr. E has been mixing up those edge guards too. We saw it down here earlier, not necessarily to go for the spike, but to kind of, you know, maybe do a stage spike or something. It's just such a nice, long lasting hitbox that it kind of worked out and there we saw it work out spectacular. Recognizing so. at zero two that upward angle dancing blade will put you in that tech chase, which it only does on PS2 by the way, because the platforms are higher mm -hmm. or, or at that percent window. Oh just super super smart from from him there, right? To find that whole huge amount of damage and still light keeping Quandell in the corner for a double. Okay, nice little up special to get out of that combo. I love that option. Maybe move for a little bit too much, but catching the roll in, down air into back air. Yeah, not gonna take it though. Oh, we wow. got the ledge chop right there. <laughs> I love that. And Mr. E, three stocks to one. I didn't even realize it was a pretty spectacular early stock. It kind of made me forget already, but let's see if we can make something happen. The problem is Mr. E, you know, very few times, but more than zero, has gotten a little too confident in this set, yeah. and it's kind of cost them. Yeah. So if we get a little bit of the, you know, a little bit of a streak, it could be D-Dog's game. The, the difference between those overconfident situations and this one is that D-Dog doesn't have a diamond, now finally getting access to his first one, but gonna have to likely take the stocks before he even can, you know, get it online, could have there, but just didn't want to give Mr. E the chance at the hit, right? Finally gonna get it online, and now Mr. E starts to be scared. But again, 73% still a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's gonna be tough, especially when you're kind of just stuck above Lucina already. At 114, Mr. E hasn't really been missing too many of these edge guards, but big opportunity, oh. see, even right there, a little overzealous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just got his Dolphin's Lock called out, really. Definitely looking for it all. And Mr. E just wants to close it. You see him going off stage and getting the Nair Bear. Fantastic job. Love that. Good stuff from Mr. E. The neutral did so much in that game. 
And we got a little preview of some extra features at the end there. We saw the neutral air kind of cover the roll distance, kind of zone out the dog and kind of make sure that, you know, Mr. E could hold down the center stage. But even right there, it was another example of how good it is at holding the ledge pressure as well. Good stuff to Mr. E, still finding ways to be creative after seemingly doing it all already. Yeah, yeah and just finding these rebounds time and time again, right? That back air as well, right? Such a great frame trap, forcing out the air dog lest it hit otherwise, and then calling out the elytra just mirrored or Quandale's movement so well, right? The, just the shadow boxing was That was immaculate. so sick, too. Kind of like yeah. forcing the roll almost by feigning like a trump or just some sort of regular get-up pressure, and then that roll led into the down air, back air. So smart. Yeah. It's just been like one big... This game was like one big call-out, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, Mr. E plays in a way that just says, I am better than you if I beat you. Right, right. And like, like he is like... He'll find his combos, he'll find your hits, but every, I feel like his advantage states are all off. I'm going to call out you doing this, right? And he's he's just so, like, he's so good at it. I can't, like, I feel, I'm struggling to even put it into words because he's just so good at finding new and different ways to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing, even when you're a top player in the world. Yeah, well, and that's why he's Lumi ranked right now. Right, exactly. Number 100, right. but. <laughs> if you want, you can actually go compose yourself, maybe put the words together and tell him in person. Right? Because we are about to do a little caster swap, so... Oh. Yeah, you're, you're booting uh, am I boot? Who am Player I? 4 and I off because... Oh, okay, uh, then yeah, go tell yeah, Mr. E. <laughs> Ubel and Mott Neva are gonna be here with <laughs> With me. AG I'm stuck in the corner out, all night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go, you're stuck there. Where can I'm they find you? Where can they find me? Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at player underscore 4, the L's and I, so PI or underscore 4. PI yeah. or underscore 4. And you can find me on all social media at VitualCast. Yeah, uh, check it out. Right Happy Pride, yeah. Free Palestine, yeah. and we'll folks. For one last time at Zeno Saga, <laughs> it's been lovely. Yeah. Enjoy Top 6. Adios. Deuces. <laughs>